Hello, everybody. This is Carrie from Carry On Accessibility. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about Google I.O. and accessibility. They announced a lot of new products, updates, and more. And we're going to talk about it from a blindness and visually impaired perspective. And for those who are new to the to the channel, welcome. We talk about assistive tech and um, accessibility and mainstream tech. Today, I'm going to do a quick, a really super rapid fire summary and of Google I.O. And then we're going to be joined with, uh, with my two guests here, John, a host from Blind Android Users, and Hershey, who is the co-host for the iBug um, Android Insights. Say hello. Hey, hello. Good evening, everybody. All right. And I will let them introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, first, I want to do that really quick um, summary for those who maybe just want to get the highlights. Um, and all of this information is also going to be put into video chapters for those who um, enjoy that after for the replay. So. Google I.O., they announced several new products. There was the Pixel 7a. It's going to be 499, and it's going to have an OLED screen and 6.1 inch, 1080 by 2400 pixels, IPS 67 water resistant, and it's going to have 128 gig storage, 8 gigs of RAM. Um, there's the Pixel tablet. And this is going to be 11 inches IP, uh, IPS LCD. Mm. And then 1600 by 2560 pixels. All of these uh, devices are going to have the Tensor G2, by the way. And it's going to have 128 or 256 gigs of storage with 8 gigs of RAM. And uh, for, for a tablet, I thought it would be important to know that it's about one pound. It also has a speaker dock that comes bundled with the tablet. Uh, the Pixel Fold. Yes, is going to have an OLED screen, 120 hertz display. On the outside, it's going to have a 5.8 inch. And on the inside, it's going to, when it's unfolded, I mean, it's going to have a 7.6 inch screen. And um, it's going to have, start at 256 gigs storage and 512 gigs is supposed to be available but i was not able to see it in the google play store and it's going to have 12 gigs of ram now some accessibility updates and there is a video linked below that was uh, a a presentation from google about these updates there is a new uh, talkback braille on-screen keyboard gesture. So we've had the keyboard for a while, but now we have more gestures. Um, there's better braille display support and non-linear text sizes. We will definitely be going back to that. And then they also mentioned action split tap typing and a few other things that uh, were updated in the last version of TalkBack, which I have done a video and I will be linking that as well. And they also mentioned reading mode, which I also have another video on. Um, they also have, for hearing accessibility, they have now separated hearing aids from other Bluetooth devices when you're setting up your phone and you can set camera flash or screen flash notifications. And there's gonna be some loud sounds alert and updates. Oh, they also mentioned updates for accessibility for developers. And there's a, a fun little video I saw about Project Game Face where you can control gaming with your face. Uh, for There was a lot of AI updates. There were things like Help Me Write, uh, features, which was really cool. There's now going to be an AI um, conversation thingamajigger in, in Google search, very similar to Bing's chat. Uh, Bard is supposed to be better at conversations and better at math and better at coding. And uh, it's going to have images. It has dark mode um, and new tools and integrations, kind of like ChatGPT uh, um, extensions. And the, you can also use images to interact with it, kind of like Google Lens, uh, which 
yeah, we'll talk about that more later. It reminds me of Be My Eyes, though. And it now has AI image. Uh, they, Google also now has an AI image generator, kind of like Dolly. Uh, working, um, they're also working on Duet AI for Docs, Sheets, and Slides, so kind of like the Microsoft Chat GPT integration. And then there's also Tailwind, which is an AI to help with students and learning. Uh, and other Android updates, really quickly, there's Magic Editor, so it kind of uses the image and uh, generative AI to edit your images. There's Magic Compose, there's wallpaper, emoji wallpapers, custom ones, and um, AI generated ones. Um, and then Find My Devices has gotten better and it'll cover more devices. It, Google didn't release its own tracker, but it will work with Tile and Chipolo and others as well. It's encrypted and it's going to use the whole network of Android users and devices similar to what iOS has. And that is a really fast rundown <laughs> of Google I.O. So let's go back to um, John and Hershey. Uh, Hershey, why don't you do a quick introduction of yourself? Absolutely. So I'm Hershey from Central Florida. And um, during the pandemic, I started off with iBug as a they asked me to come by since I was answering all the Android questions. So with that, I basically co-host with my other co-host, Ava Karuf, and I uh, with iBug Android Insight, and it's been three years. And so been using Android phones for quite some time, and I got to even be on the Blind Android Users Group the other week, episode 124. So uh, just an Android fanatic, I guess. I like tech. iOS works just as well, too. Other tech that's going to cure the accessibility need is going to be the best tech for anybody. Awesome. Thanks, Hershey. And John? I'm John Dyer. I'm one of the co-hosts of the Blind Android Users podcast. It's a weekly podcast we do. You can find it anywhere you get podcasts. And we also have a YouTube channel, which is Blind Android Users. And yeah, yet we, had, we have guests, frequent guests on. Hershey was on there. Uh, a couple weeks ago, as he mentioned. So, and I was out yeah. there too a couple years ago. I think. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to have you back sometime. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, one, yeah, I have only attended iBug once. So the for the um, Android Insights, it's definitely a fun little chat there. I every, guess I should is say, y'all every... both should come back on on the show. <laughs> So it's every third Wednesday. If, if it, it makes it easy, because what you two do is give information of how to use this stuff. But in our call, it's actually just to people coming about and saying, hey, well, Carrie had a video about this thing, or John did the video about that thing on, you know, blind Android users. And we could actually discuss it and go over it. So love to have you guys. Yeah. Um... The only problem is it's on a day that I usually have something else going on. So I totally yeah. get it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but anyway, what is your like? What was your reaction to Google I/O? And is there anything that you, you know that really surprised you, or that you're really intrigued about? Why don't you go first, John? Um, I was surprised in a couple of ways. Um, the Pixel, the pricing surprised me in two ways. I, I think the Pixel tablet was priced a lot lower than I was expecting. And the um, I was hoping that the uh, Fold, the Pixel Fold, would be cheaper than the uh, Galaxy Fold because, you, pick, you know, for the last couple of years, Google's been undercutting the competition. You know, the Pixel 6 and 7 mm -hmm. both started at 600 and iPhone and Galaxy S series phones start at 800, and then the Pixel Pro is 900. Even though, like the Pro models of, um, you know, the iPhone started at 1,000, so they've been undercutting the competition for a couple of years. I was hoping it would continue, but no, they matched Samsung exactly. The 256 model costs 1,800 dollars. The 512 gigabyte model costs 1,920. So the exact same pricing. Yeah, I was. The same. I was really, really hoping because I have been wanting to try the Fold. John has told me about the, the Z Fold uh, 4, right? That's the one that you mentioned. 
yes that you have yeah and uh i have just been really wanting to try it and so i just jump chipped and i have pre-ordered the <laughs> pixel fold and uh you it also comes with the uh, pixel watch when you're you pre-order it which uh yeah i i wasn't super um enthused about the tablet though um it it's an LCD display. That's the part that really gets to me. But John, did you didn't you pre-order that as well? Yeah, I I did pre-order it. I'm I have a month and a half to back out, <laughs> <laughs> cancel my order. So I don't know if I'm going to stick with it or not. But yes, I did pre-order it. All right. What about you, Hershey? And by the way, yeah. videos off just uh, in case um, you wanted to. Oh, turn. Okay. For both of us. Anyway, um, so what's interesting is that um, the tag thing that you mentioned, they're actually even partnered up with Apple on that because mm -hmm. of the, the wider network. And that was definitely needed, especially for privacy sakes. So I'm glad that they worked with Tile, Chipolo, and Apple, for that matter, to build that larger network of, um, I guess, accessible tiles or to find your device. For Find well, My. Go ahead. Well, what's interesting is um, uh, in the keynote itself, they mentioned that they worked with Apple for um, security for the, the trackers. Uh, so if there's an unknown tracker following you, right. but does that mean that they're working together for the, the Find My devices, like using the whole network like i mean iphone and android users or is that just for unknown trackers well you know what would define one device over the other as far as networks is concerned i mean let's look at how they've all collabed on the matter uh, uh standard right so i think that in this case it might be that they worked on it to a certain extent it might not be the same exact uh, way of how you know Apple does it to how Google does it or let's say Tile does it, but this kind of standardizes that. So I think the, mo the most risk is having that unknown tracker of stalking and this, that, and the other. So I think that's what really you know they're trying to deter. So uh, I don't know. It could be. A, I think in the, in the long run, it's a win either way you look at it. And they mm -hmm. did call out Apple for even like the keyboard. Uh, or for the messages, excuse me. Oh, yes. RCS. So then, yes, yeah. they totally yeah. took pot shots <laughs> at, at Apple for that I, one. I don't know if uh, Apple doesn't care, but yeah, they've done that a couple of years now. They're going to um, keep taking shots at them. So is my camera back on now? I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, no. Both of your cameras are off. And, okay. You know, uh -huh. If you guys want to turn them on, is what I was trying to say. You can. Gotcha. Uh, no. yeah. Okay. My, so mine's back on now. Yes. I'm using my tablet and talk back. Uh, the label doesn't change when it's <laughs> when it's on or off. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, the tracker thing is is interesting because I just hope they work better together. Because, for example, I use um, AirPods. That's like my earbuds of choice, even though I'm like all Android. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I so when I go someplace with my AirPods, it'll like alert Ashley, my wife, who has an iPhone, it'll tell her she's being tracked because the AirPods don't, they don't like talk to my Android phone and know that they belong to me. So it thinks like I just dropped my AirPods off and like left them in her car or something, even though we're just going someplace together. <laughs> so I had to like disable find my uh, on them. So mm -hmm. stuff like that, yeah. it's kind of like, like they do it to, it's a good re it's good that they do it but it just needs to work better cross platform and i hope that's where it's going the problem is apple does not have a good track record for wanting to work mm -hmm. cross platform and um at least for security because considering all the yeah. news about uh air tags and what people have done with air tags yeah and also the abysmal app that Apple created so that you can check if there's any um, air tags near you, like from your Android device. I, I had a terrible experience with that. Like, I mean, with the app. Um, and, yeah. And 
I'm just hoping. Maybe. We'll have to see, I guess, for, from what they actually do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about you, Hershey? Did you did you find any of the products interesting or maybe something that you'd want to get or try? I definitely find that the tablet is an interesting thing as far as what information it provides because it, it's a it's something that you could dock or if you need to talk to, let's say, your kid and say, hey, this is how you do this, that, and the other. So I like it for what that uh, aspect of it does. Um, granted, I wish it had an OLED screen just like everything else nowadays. So that mm. LCD screen is a big bummer. Um, it is. It really uh, as far is. as the fold... Uh, I guess if it's going to be a little bit sleek, sleeker and slimmer than the uh, current Fold, then why not if it's going to be Pixel, especially so for screen reader users. I think that phone is going to be a beautiful phone to have because it's the, the form the form <laughs> factor of having a slim device and then it could get bigger if you needed to. And then... Um, which is it's it's really interesting really quickly um one of my hesitations with getting the fold is that the outside screen is 5.8 inches which right now i use a 6.7 inch screen and moving to even if it's the outer display to a 5.8 inch i'm just like i think i'll probably have it open all the time (laughs) So what's so interesting about that, Carrie, is I was looking back because, I don't know, the other day I pulled out all my phones and uh, the Note 5 was a 5.8 screen, a 5.8 inch screen phone. And I honestly love the device because it fit in your hands and your hands didn't get tired. Nowadays, with the phone screens being wider and stuff, it is fatiguing in the hand for a longer period. So your hand might go numb and you're just, you know, swiping away editing or something. So. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, the form factor does make a difference, I think. Yeah. I think and my, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, go uh, ahead. I think my biggest concern with it is going to be the battery life. Mm, because, yeah. you know, like you mentioned, you're probably going to be using it that larger screen most of the time. And that's going to really uh, drain the battery. I don't think the battery, I could be wrong. I don't think the battery is any bigger than like what's in the Pixel 7 Pro. But it's going to have to power a much larger screen. So only time will tell, but that's something that I'm a little worried about. I think it is bigger, but I'm not sure. Um, Now I want to look it up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. Google doesn't have the snapshot. Where's this little snapshot that's supposed to just answer my question? Oh, well. Okay. Um, I think they did say that it's 5,000 that the fold um does anybody know off the top of their head uh how big the battery is for the 7 pro no okay. i don't know i don't know never mind then <laughs> i know i know the fold is not 5000 do you know what the fold is do you have that yeah but i think it they, i think they did say it was 5000 oh okay the s22 ultra is 5000 isn't it or, yeah yeah, yeah s23 ultra yeah, 22 to 23, both are 5,000, so. Well, I, I don't necessarily find the Pixel 7 battery life, uh, the Pro, to be mm-hmm. very good. Have you guys? Yeah. Seen? No, I think it's average. And the thing is, like, after the S, so the S23 Ultra, which is my current daily, is, like, it's the best battery I've ever had <laughs> in my life in a phone. So going to anything else is going to just not feel good. Like, I... I have this thing at 100% brightness all the time, and I get like seven to eight hours of screen on time, which I've never gotten that much in a phone before. Wow. Um, well, okay, so I just looked it up. It is actually 4,700 milliamp for the Fold, and it's uh, 5,000 for the Pro. So that's kind of scary that yeah, it's actually a smaller saying. battery. No. <laughs> And, the and, it, and it has the same a... processor, right? So it's yeah. the processor is going to use the same amount of battery, and then it's going to be powering a bigger screen. Unless the screen, I guess it's possible that the screen is more efficient because it's a newer um, screen. I think this is actually a newer screen than what's on going to be on the Fold Five. Believe it or really? not, like it's made by Samsung, but it's not even going to be in the Fold Five this year. So 
Mm. It's going to yeah, be a nice I, screen. I hope it's so, efficient. So the full is 12 millimeters uh, thick, whereas the Z Fold 4 is uh, 15 to 16, like depending on like the part that's folded and i'm like why couldn't you just make it a little thicker and put a little bit more battery in there i would have totally been fine with that yeah. um but one uh, so i'm more excited about the fold uh i i just want a bigger screen <laughs> i would love to have a bigger screen um and not have to have it as a tablet because tablets are just just really big um but i i think the concept of what they did with the tablet is really cool. And I think it's really true that, um, you know, we have tablets. They said that 80% of tablet use is um, what people use it at home, which, I mean, I don't know where they get that, that statistic, but uh, it's pretty true for me anyway. Um, and then a lot of the time it is out of battery. So if I could just yes. like put it down and charge it on the speaker and then you can use it as a, a, a Nest Hub like experience, then that would be really nice. Yeah, just have to put it, make sure that this um, speaker dock is like out of reach of my three year old. <laughs> <laughs> Or the tablet will not stay on there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Put that way up high. But then mm -hmm. they might climb, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it Also, the tablet has a uh, fingerprint scanner. I couldn't catch where it was, but yeah. yeah I'm hoping it's on the though. power button. Um, I it's think hard. It it's hard to get the right spot when it's on, like, on under screen on a tablet because yeah so... imagine that huge yeah. space 11 that's how inches. my s7 plus was and i was like i could never get it <laughs> yeah carrie you bring an interesting point up with the 7a uh i was reading through one of the the write-ups mm -hmm. and they mentioned face id as something i know that they oh, don't really? have solely on that phone but really face unlock they don't have um like my son well, it's really mine, but my son is using <laughs> Pixel 6a and um, it doesn't have face ID uh, or face unlock. And um, it's interesting that the 7a is going to get that. I will... Is there somewhere in the write up that I was flipping hmm. through so many pages and I'm like, wait, what? Because yeah, the 7 and 7 Pro have it. It's not secure, so you can't use it for like payments and stuff, but it will it open your phone. It will unlock your phone. Same same way Samsung phones work. Like right, you right. can't yeah. unlock them with your face, but you can't do anything like get into a secure app or make a payment or anything like that. Well, that's because a non biometric. That's because it's at least for the seven, it doesn't work very well. Um, at least yeah. that's my experience. I just use the fingerprint, and even though it might take me. Um, once or twice to unlock it with the on-screen, under the screen uh, fingerprint scanner. I'd rather that than not enough light. I'm like, the light is on. <laughs> Don't stop yeah. telling me there's not enough light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a security issue because, um, you know, with just a regular camera with no depth perception to mm -hmm. it, like you can easily fake just hold up a photo of somebody's face or something like Which that. Which I say, so, let's yeah. bring back Soli, right? For that same <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, because so solely actually you could do everything with face unlock because it was secure. Yeah. And that's one thing I really do like about the iPhone, like the face, the face unlock or the face uh face ID on there. It's you could be in a pitch dark, your screen mm -hmm. curtain on and like no light whatsoever, and it will unlock your screen. And it's like it works every time. <laughs> so nice. Um, did you guys, uh, what did you guys think of any of the Android uh, 14 updates that are coming or the accessibility? Any thoughts so on I, those? I, I'm excited about the um, new gestures in the Braille keyboard because we've needed them for a long time. Like the way it works now <laughs> to actually navigate. So you could swipe up and down to navigate by word or characters, but you have to actually leave the keyboard to change your granularity and then go back into the keyboard. So like to have separate gestures for m navigating by each granularity is going to be nice. And to be able to select text, which I don't think you can do at all now in the Braille keyboard. Um, 
So I heard I haven't tested it because I don't typically use Braille screen input on iPhone, but um, it doesn't, uh, does it not have gestures to select and copy and cut and all that while you're in Braille screen input? That's what um, somebody did tell me. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but that that's just hearsay. So don't don't quite uh, mark my words. But <laughs> also, it was really nice to see Nimmer on there. Um, uh, he did the accessibility presentation, and one of the other things that he mentioned uh, was the nonlinear text sizing. That, that's such a that's such a beautiful name, isn't it? Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I. Finally, my Pixel 7 updated to the beta for um, Android 14. It took a really long time. It didn't finish until like 15 minutes before before the live stream. <laughs> when I started, I think around 5. Um, but I tried it. And if I can find it, it, the text is bigger than what we had. And this is one of the complaints that I have been raising with Google all the time that on iPhone, you can still make it larger. On Samsung, you can make it larger. Why is it that on Pixel, the text size options are so limited? And so they have actually listened. They actually listened. And they, That's awesome. they, they they've made it better. And one implementation that I really like is that not everything gets larger at the same rate. So typically when you um, make your text larger, all the headings will get really huge as well. Um, and so the with the nonlinear whatever text sizing, it's going to be like the, the headings are going to um, increase text size slower than the like base font, which it, which I've only tested for like two minutes, but it seems to work pretty well. Um, I, I don't think, have either of you seen it at all? No, I haven't. No, I haven't really tested okay. it much either. Yeah, well, I haven't either. And hopefully there's there's also going to be, um, well, I don't know when it's going to come out, but on the Android 14 developer preview one, I believe it was, or the second one, there was a uh, contrast um slider where you could choose if you wanted lower contrast, medium contrast, or high contrast. And it, it was still in beta and it's not um in the beta two. I think we're on beta two. Um yeah. so we're not sure if it's gonna actually come out in Android 14, but there also there is also that which which would be really nice because there are a lot of elements out there that um are are not the the best contrast and if that can change dynamically that would be really nice um let's see <clears throat> did you guys listen to the ai part and all the talk about ai all yes right. ai ai ai, AI. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys tried bard uh nope. i took the same response that it had about a vegan recipe or something it just and i copy pasted it and that's all i used it for <laughs> so yeah, far I, so i haven't tried it either i i just heard hearsay that it's not as good as chat gpt and i'm like eh, i've know, heard I'll the opposite it. actually so really? like so i've heard as far as formation how it mm -hmm. formats information back to you it does a better job but if you just want information to be grabbed quickly chat gpt does a better job so it's just depending on who uses what, when. Um, one thing that really did uh, pull my interest was the writing and the compose for yes. Gmail and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that just saves so much time. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Elaborate on what you're. What... Well, so, so what I basically how I how I took it is it's you have spell check, and then you have grammar check. Well, this is both of those juiced up with all these extra AI features, you could say. So it might give you a, uh, you might not have Grammarly and stuff to your, you know, for accessibility sakes, and this might help you to write something better. So it gives you ways of writing a better documentation or to tone something better. 
through mm -hmm. Writer and Compose, and it's part of your workspace. So hopefully they won't, you know, compromise it by saying, well, it's only for business and this user is not for everybody. So hopefully that won't happen, but uh, definitely a cool thing. Yeah, definitely. And uh, one thing that I, I really like is even with uh, email and well, right now we have those uh, suggested phrases like it'll kind of complete what we want to say on um, Gmail. But if you could just say a very short phrase and it like elaborate on the whole thing. I mean, I, I they would save me so much time and and a lot of effort, and then you can just go back and tweak it. It's so for me at least, it's so much easier to edit something than to create something. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, and also uh, there was something where you could actually use an image to talk to Bard, or like take an image and have Bard refer to that image. Um, for well, the, the 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 example that they had was a um, picture of two dogs and make a caption of this dog, and then um, so you feed the image into the into Bard and it can generate uh, things from that image. And I'm like, well, that's very similar to what Be My Eyes is trying to do, um, and I wonder how well that would work for image descriptions. Carrie, this is really interesting that you're mentioning this. So mid journey, uh, as everybody's getting into AI and all this other stuff, mm -hmm. they have plugins where they describe stuff to you almost like all tags. And sometimes when I'm reading or listening to other people, it's elaborate how they type a whole story of things and then you get an image and it tells you in, in all tag almost. So for what is gonna move forward with how Google uses this, uh, using captioning for SEO for your videos or using um, different, um, like trying to figure out if it's real or not. They, I forget what they called it, but there's a verification of sorts that you could do to verify if the material, like the news material is legit and it's not or it's fake or something. So, or yeah, it, it'll tell forget, you if it's AI generated or AI not. AI generated, right. That's what it was. Uh, so in that capacity of things, um, you know, it could help us really understand AI properly rather than, hey, I could put AI and then you're making money off of something really quick just because it's a big boom in the industry. Yeah, we'll have to see that. And and um, you can actually access uh, Bard now. Then I think they said that it's now publicly available instead of um, being on a wait list. On a beta, okay. And then uh, for search, which was uh, g.co slash labs, and you mm -hmm. could get the searches uh, version of its AI functionality. I have to sign up for that. Sign up for that. Yeah, that's a sign up. Yeah. Thing. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. And then I tried, I could not figure out how to do the Duet AI, which is the integration for workspace for Google Sheets, Docs, and Slides. And that was pretty cool too. It's a little bit like Magic Compose where it'll compose whatever for you, like an email, but um, it can do a lot more like um, writing things for you. You can edit it. It can um, give you suggestions on the sidebar of uh, different things that you could do for sheets. You can uh, tell it to add a column for something specific and it will uh, generate that information. Like the, an example that they had was um, make a, a Google Sheets for uh, for a college search. And then you just you can just keep telling it to add different columns and everything. And it will generate the information based on the research that it does, which is so, which is. Carrie, cool. I have a question for you about yeah. that. Um, let's just say if it was something like the art, like it was Aparna, Arpna, I think, or Aparna. Uh, she described like the pizza with swirly stuff, and it's making an art thing. Now, if you're using Google Slides as a uh, kind of a presentation thing, so if you're just doing a video on. StreamYard as you're on right now or whatever platform mm -hmm. and you use Google Slides as kind of like a show and tell of, hey, this is what we're talking about, the Pixel phone and the Fold. Would you say that having that AI to make sure that your images are centered or it's telling you what the images are, that you would probably want to use 
the technology more if that that was made easier for you so you don't have to go outside of the box to like canva or other yes absolutely you know. i mean if i could just be like okay make a presentation the first slide i want this the second slide i want that like i uh, get some pictures of the google pixel right. Uh, or whatever that would be awesome and i have already thought of this but they i would love to see ai a video generated video as well um and, and not necessarily right now we're not at that stage yet but uh we're getting there and like if, if we can have it edit videos for us um you know one of the biggest complaints is that video editing is really hard and it's not accessible and it would be really cool if AI could uh, kind of tackle that. Which, uh, sorry to kind of keep, this is kind of exciting topics, but uh, I've already <laughs> seen some some software like Descript is one of them that have been in this game. And the other partnership to just uh, signify here is Adobe is partnering up with Google too with that. So uh, no, we'll see. Adobe. Okay. Right. So we'll see what's going to happen there as far as graphical stuff goes, because that's going to give you, uh, you're not going to get ease to get your images and stuff, right? So that's going to give you mm. um, better privacy in that sense or it's better content. So we'll have to see that partnership amongst that and then how we outbound it to accessibility. So is it going to be all, all tagged or is it going to have a generation for all tag and stuff? So, yeah. We'll yeah, it's going to be definitely really interesting. Joshua asks, uh, did they say when TalkBack 14 uh, will release? Do you guys know the answer to this? No, they no. did not. But it, I would say fall. Last year, it, it, so it normally comes out in the fall, but last year they released it in the summer. I think it was like end of July. It's when TalkBack 13 came out. So you never know. I would say look at the cycle of uh, the beta cycle. So we're already at beta two. So beta three is right around the corner, probably for June, July is beta four. And so if they release talk back at the same time, just to keep everything in sync, then that's more than likely. I don't know if they will. They, they, do they typically do that? I don't feel they like don't, they don't, but it's just like everything's seeming yeah. to work together. Everything's being pushed and even Samsung's ready to grab onto the 14. And then the Samsung betas are going to come out soon for uh, Android 14 on Samsung too. So. Have you guys noticed if Samsung has updated TalkBack at all to match uh, nope, Google's there's... version of TalkBack 13.1? They're still using 13. Oh, uh, okay. I, yeah. I, I so they don't thinking... even have they don't even have actions yet, like as a it's reading. Terrible! It's terrible. Control. Yeah. 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 I don't like that. Um, hey, Samsung, if you're watching, come on, Samsung. Hurry up. We love you. We love using your products. We just want it to be better, right? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you know, you could sponsor me anytime. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, Joker Alice says, as somebody who uses a Braille screen input on iOS, she can say that uh, you need to get out of the keyboard in order to be able to cut, copy, or or paste, um, and even to change position on the text. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's wow. something that iOS doesn't have yeah. nice okay we'll have to see what else happens oh what, what about multi-language okay, by the way real quick yeah go What's ahead the, what about the multi-language part like what do you think about yeah. that uh do you think that's going to be a big impact to people i missed the multi-language thing could you well it's, it's with the braille input and everything else i think I, there's more languages in braille now right okay so uh oh with the their braille supported languages right yeah. right Okay, yeah, I think that would be awesome. Um, I don't really know what languages they didn't have or what what not. Yeah, but... just there's a lot of a lot happened, but I mean that was one yeah. of the things. So yeah, and I'm hoping that the Braille display uh, will work better because I have heard that a lot of Braille display users kind of stick with iOS because of the terrible support on with Talkback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I haven't. I don't have a Braille display, so I don't know, <laughs> and I haven't been able to test it. Uh, oh, oh, what is this? Um, Samsung would be a good product sponsorship because you you do take a lot of shots at Apple. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Fine toes. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What else did we not talk about? Was there anything else that we haven't talked about that you guys can think of? Uh, yeah, they released a new color of the Pixel Buds A series. <laughs> Ooh, yay! I'm just a kidding. new color. Oh, cares about that. <laughs> it's like the purple iPhone or the yellow iPhone. It's like here, oh, here's I, a new color. I don't remember if you mentioned it or not, but if you do, I guess it's not mm -hmm. a pre-order deal because it's out now. But the six A, if you buy it right now, it comes with Pixel Buds A series, or um. You can upgrade to the Pixel Buds Pro and get like a hundred dollars off of them. So you could pay an extra hundred to get the Pixel Buds Pro, or you can just get the Pixel Buds A series for free and you get a free case if you get it through the Google Store. I'm telling is you, that John. Three twenty nine, I think, John. Uh, is that the price? Is it like a pretty did stellar I, did deal? I say six A. I meant seven A. Seven A. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's Sorry. four ninety nine. Yeah, four ninety nine. Okay. So huh. free watch with so Carrie just loves her watch. That watch is coming back oh, to you, Carrie. I know. So this, <laughs> so I'm funny. I am selling that thing as soon as I get it. Get rid of it. Like, here you go, man. This is going to be the third time <laughs> with the Pixel Watch. I think I figure if I sell the Pixel Watch mm. and a kidney, then I could pay off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> This is absolutely insane with these phones. I remember it was like 500. Wow. 700. Oh my goodness. 1000. Apple is crazy. And now 1800 and above. This so, is like just... a month from now, you got your WWDC. Then you got the Samsung events mm -hmm. in August. So, you got the flip and the fold. So, who knows what's going to be next? We'll have to see. One thing that I did like about the the uh, Pixel Fold is the fact that uh, the, the hinge, um, when you close the Z Fold 4, it's not even. And it has like a, a um, what do you call it? It's call it swoop. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever that thing, but it doesn't fold flat. And then the, the uh, Pixel Fold folds flat. And I don't know. It's just like a little design thing. Oh, mm -hmm. and one thing about um, they supposedly uh, have are trying to make tablets uh, more optimized for the larger screen, and so they have are supposed to have better app support for um, you know that larger screen and. I don't know. For me, I wish I could turn it off. Yes, <laughs> Accessibility what, wise, please. That's what I'm hoping for off. because you can do that on Samsung's because like you can because it'll automatically format it in tablet mode. Like when you open the screen, if mm -hmm. you're in like a messaging app, it'll split in half so that yes. on the left are like your conversations and then on the right is the conversation that's selected. But you can on a Samsung fold go in and turn that off so it, it just shows you like a giant version of the phone app that's what i want that's exactly yeah. what i want okay if i have a bigger screen make it bigger don't make things smaller mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in two parts and and i've told i don't know i don't know how many times i've mentioned this and sent feedback on this for to google and maybe they, they did listen with the text so maybe um they can listen with the tablet because that is really a struggle like um when I did have a, um, what was the tablet? It was, uh, I think it was, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what the model was, but it was a really cheap Android tablet that I was just trying. And that was like, it would bother me so much because it couldn't get bigger. And it's just so much on the screen and it's hard to navigate. It's hard to see. And you just don't know where things are because it's a bigger screen and, like we, at least for me, like with TalkBack, I already know the layout on the phone and I kind of want to have the same layout on a mm -hmm. bigger screen. Have you guys used speaking the multi? Of, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, speaking of both of those, uh, since the tablet is running TalkBack, right? And it's running Android, whatever version it's going to be running. Uh, do you mm -hmm. think that Chromebooks still have a space in the ecosystem of accessibility needs? Uh like, what do you think Chromebooks are going to get now? Or do you think they're done with Chromebooks and they're just going to push into this bigger screen, run Android and run TalkBack kind of situation? Or do you think that they'll make Chrome OS better and then Chromebox better? I think Chromebooks are here to stay. 
Yeah, I think they're uh, here to stay. Because people love that laptop form factor. Um, I guess technically they could at some point decide to start just put Android on a Chromebook, which I would love. Um, well, you can already get Android apps and you can um, turn on TalkBack for Android apps on a Chromebook. Mm -hmm. um, but like, the Nest Hub has Fuchsia as its thing, but I, I don't find myself <laughs> using the, the hubs. They just feel annoying. So I wonder how this tablet's going to, if I'm going to be able to keep using it every day or if I'm going to just leave it alone. Yeah, I have a, a lot of questions about the tablet. Um, mm. I'm I'm curious to like get it and test it because I'm wondering if they took into account a lot of the accessibility stuff. Like, it's like if I say if I have Talkback on, and um, I ask Google Assistant something, like is it gonna is Google Assistant gonna talk and Talkback start talking at the same time? Like, I, I'm worried that they've like not taken that sort of thing into account. Yeah, and then once it's in hub mode, because you can put it in hub mode when it's hub mode when it, it's docked onto the speaker, is it still going to use TalkBack or is it going to use the Chromevox? Which is, yeah, man, the Chrome Chromevox experience on like a Google Home Hub is, I hate to say it, but it's garbage. So I agree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's bad. So I, I'm curious to see: will they let you use TalkBack while it's docked, or will they make you have to use? Chromebox. That would be terrible. I know. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it just wouldn't make sense. It all oh, the tablet also has um a Chromecast built into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm um, curious. Does it have to be docked to receive, or can you always cast to it? That's another question I have. Oh, that is a good question. And I wonder if you can use the speaker without the tablet. Like, can you cast your your phone yeah, you to the speaker. Can. I'm pretty sure you, you can't. I wish you could. That would be <laughs> awesome. Because I'm going to like forget to put my tablet back on the stand and I'm going to start talking to Google and be like, why aren't you answering me? <laughs> yeah, I want to see how TalkBack runs on a foldable. On Very a Pixel true. foldable. Yeah, yeah, Pixel. How they do it. Yeah. How does how does it feel on the Z Fold 4? Good. I mean, there's... To be honest, and this is weird, I had more issues on the outside screen than on the inside screen. Like mm. some apps, I just couldn't get certain things in focus, like near the top when I was on the outside screen. I think they fixed it, but like there were actually more bugs with the outside the screen, with really? outside screen, which is more of a normal phone screen. Um, but yeah, I didn't really have any issues with the big display. I hope the speaker is better on the Fold as well, um, better than the 7 Pro, because I wasn't super uh, impressed with the 7 Pro uh, sound. But Yeah, the speakers on the Fold are awesome. I love them. Are they a little bit like the uh, Samsung, the, the, the 8, the tablet? Or probably not. No, they're big. they're like phone speakers, but there's yeah. like it it doesn't use an earpiece for one of the speakers, so it's actually oh, a downward okay. firing and an upward firing speaker. So, I miss like those when you turn it to speakers. landscape, it's yeah. like actual equal stereo. Like you don't have one speaker coming at you and the other speaker going out to the side. Like they're both uh, symmetrical. Well, one interesting thing that I thought was pretty cool is you can in in for um for the fold is you can use the uh the main camera and have the viewfinder on the outside screen and if google finally gets around to maybe making a magnifier or if the developer for WeZoom could do that or something like that and then we could have a stand you'd have like the the camera pointing down at whatever it is you're looking at and then like the screen can be angled and i was just like that is the, that would be a really interesting um like a little portable cctv like experience and mm -hmm. uh, i would want to see that and then i wonder how can you do braille screen input when your uh fold is open yes but the problem is it the problem is you have to recalibrate every time because like Ew. you're it it 
it kind of remembers how your finger, where your fingers were the last time you used it, whether you were using the small screen or the large screen. Um, so it's like if if you if the last time you used it, you had used a different the other screen, you'll have to recalibrate your fingers again. Yeah, but if you maybe if you use the larger screen at, in tabletop mode, will it remember that? And then you, if you use screen away mode, oh, I don't know. Will it I, remember maybe, that? maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it would if you always used tabletop when it was open and always used uh, screen away when it was closed. Then probably. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that uh, the Pixel Fold maybe they maybe they thought of that. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> we'll have to see. I'm not holding my breath, but. Maybe. <laughs> 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 yeah uh and one last thing about um android uh, 14 beta is i noticed they still have not fixed the color inversion problem and this is also another reason why i'm sticking with samsung because are you talking you... about the thing where it refreshes the page yes oh yes nice. it's terrible so bad. <laughs> okay i'm not the only one times. i'm uh -huh. not the only one I said it a million times, hey guys, if you go to the Chrome, if you go to the website, it refreshes. <laughs> and nope, nobody listens to us. Man. No. Uh -huh. your, your, your microphone is kind of cutting in and out. Um, I'm sorry, yeah, but nobody yeah, heard but, us. Yeah, but... Came in with that. Yeah, but it's so true. And you should I not have... be afraid to invert colors. Like, I'm afraid. Like, will yes! I lose what I've done so far? <laughs> you will! And it's terrible. You're like, scroll... <clears throat> You scroll down to like uh, I don't know some random thing on the page, and then if you like color invert, it takes you back to the top and changes it. And I'm just like, no. Yeah, it's bad. But Samsung you know does it so it much is. better, and I use um, a routine to like all the apps that I know I'm gonna have to invert my colors. You can set up a routine to just always invert the colors when you go in that app, and then always uninvert them when you leave that app. And it's uh, it's awesome. So. Yeah. I do there's that on the, the Samsung phone. There's also the force dark mode, but it's not yep. quite. It works on a lot of apps, yeah. but yeah. not all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I wish you could just choose which ones you wanted to force dark mode on, like the mm -hmm. routines, I guess. But yeah, I prefer dark mode a lot better than um, inverting colors, right? Because you still get the, the mm -hmm. right picture instead of like those. Just yeah. Weird and it's not always inverting. Like it's not always black you know white on black it might be like gray mm -hmm. on gray and it's still just as hard to see when it's inverted exactly one question about that would you guys want a custom gesture to be able to do color inversion for samsung devices because like a three finger swipe up sometimes works sometimes just gets in the way what do you think so you can assign a gesture to the accessibility shortcut and then you could use that to invert your colors if you wanted to Okay, so it does. I, it, I tried it. It wouldn't allow the accessibility button. Kind of customized gesture only give you the three finger or the floating button. So interesting. I I know it was broken for a while, but I'm not sure if they fixed it because I I've just been using the um the three finger swipe up from the bottom the the, the gesture, uh, right. and it. I don't know if this is uh, similar to your experiences, but the Samsung, like when I have talk back on and do the, oh, or when, no, when I have talk back off, well, when I have talk back on, I'm sorry, it, <laughs> it pretty much works pretty well I, uh, for me, like the three finger swipe up on both the Pixel and the Samsung. But when I have talk back off, like, and you, you're only using a two finger, it it gets kind of confused on the pixel whereas like on the samsung it's usually most in like 99 percent of the time or maybe more than that um it'll know that i want to do the accessibility gesture mm. but the pixel like I, I don't know i have trouble with it is do you guys notice that or is it just me <laughs> i noticed um i don't know if it's still there because i haven't used my pixel in a while but i had issues <laughs> yeah. with talkback mm -hmm. on because it would do like whatever i had signed uh three finger tap and hold it would do that every time i swiped up with three fingers so it's like selecting turning on selection mode or something i forget what it is by default oh, i yeah. had different issues with yeah. that 
Yeah, wait, wait, maybe I'm confusing myself and maybe that. Well, that was but, one of the issues, but I think they I think they did fix it. It's possible. Sure. I, haven't, I haven't used it in a while. Yeah. It feels like the three finger gestures are just being stacked up. So like I think it's two finger triple tap and hold is to mute speech on or off. And then like the three fingers are sometimes with the two and the three. I don't know, it feels confusing or convoluted. Yeah, they mm -hmm. they haven't fixed it. Never mind. Just kidding. I, I guess I just use my Samsung a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know because I have it assigned. Like I have an ang one of the angle gestures is assigned to my accessibility shortcut just because I don't want to have to deal with yep. it. So beautiful gestures. With three yeah. fingers. Samsung still has not fixed the whole... Uh, you can only assign one accessibility gesture or you'll get a menu thing. Yes, like every time. <sighs> not the first time, but every time. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, they need to fix that. And uh, at least with Google, when you call them and they have like an email, you feel like you're talking to a person. But whenever you send an email to, to, to Samsung's accessibility email, it just it disappears into a black hole. Yeah, it goes nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, I wish that just Samsung and Google would just work together more. Stop, stop it with this like whole like uh, we'll yeah. make our own version of Talkback. Yeah, yeah. But that is pretty much it. We're coming to the top of the hour. I'm just gonna quickly see if there's any other um any other comments here that uh, we can answer. He needs to jump out of this. Oh. Um, Joker says there's static sounds anytime uh, Hershey talks. Yeah, S sorry about that. You are physically able to feel what are whatever what fi I cannot speak. I'm sorry. You are physically able to feel whenever the device is folded. I'm not sure what that means, but yeah. Um, and. Here we go. Joker Alice said, I had a Samsung tablet three by three back on the back in the day. I hated how the font size wasn't as huge as I would have liked it. Although I love the screen size for reading manga, I found myself grabbing my dad's iPad. That is so interesting because uh, I was actually comparing my iPad with my um, Samsung tablet. And in most cases, the Samsung tablet has larger font size. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I, um, the iPad, it, it suffers from the same thing that iPhones have. So you can make the text size really, really large, but only for system, certain system things and for certain apps. Whereas, like on Samsung, it's more uh, across the board on third-party apps and everything. Well, that is pretty much it. Thank you so much, Hershey and John, for joining me. It's definitely been such a pleasure to chat with you guys and everybody in the uh, live chat as well to talk about Google I/O and all the new products and and also uh, rag on Apple and Samsung and Pixel all at the same time while we celebrate them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely encourage you to go check out um, iBug and their Android Insight if you uh, if you want to have um, more calls and uh, just a community. And uh, for blind Android users, they have a great podcast. And one thing I love about blind Android users is that on their YouTube channel, they have playlists. And uh, they break up their videos into different segments and put them on those playlists. So if you don't want to necessarily listen to the whole podcast, you can jump directly to what you're looking for. And so I would definitely uh, encourage you to check out that resource. And thank you again, Hershey and John and to everybody. And have, I hope everybody Pleasure. has a great night. Good night. Good night.